this week's Torah portion, the Torah tells us how Isaac feels like he's getting older. And he summons his son Esav to give him a blessing. But the Torah tells us how he starts feeling older. The Torah tells us, and I'm reading in chapter 27, verse 1, Vayhi ki zaken itzhak, itzhak is getting older, vatichena enav mereot, and his eyes are starting to dim. And to this, the Midrash tells us what was going on. Itzhak actually, according to the Midrash, requested from God that he suffers. What an interesting phenomenon. A person requesting pain, requesting suffering. Well, God says, okay, you want suffering? You want suffering brought to mankind? Let's start with you. And then Isaac's eyes started dimming. But why would he want to suffer? Does anyone really want to suffer? The Midrash says, Isaac told God he wants to suffer because at the day of his death, he wants his judgment to be not so severe. He figured if I suffer during my life, at least the judgment will be a little less heated, will be a little less stringent. So God says, okay, I'll do that for you, but you're gonna be the first one. From you and on, it will happen. The Zerashim Shon asks, one second, one second, one second. Has there not been any suffering yet in the world? Yitzhak was born after 2,000 years, more than 2,000 years since the world was created. And you're telling me that he was the first one to ask for suffering and for, to suffer? One second, didn't? The world gets flooded, people drowned. Didn't Sidom get obliterated off the face of this earth? They suffered there. Avraham, when he was 70 years old, he had the covenant that he made with God. And during that interaction between him and God, he was actually promised that his descendants will be exiled to a foreign land which was also an aspect of suffering. That suffering was set out. But Isaac was the one to bring suffering into the world. Zerah Shimshon says, makes no sense. So listen to how he answers. He says, there's a difference between the way suffering was supposed to be in the world and the way Isaac introduced suffering to this world. And we'll see, Isaac actually did us all a favor and he did a beautiful thing for us. The way it was and the way it was intended to be was collective suffering. When there was a group of people, they could suffer together, and that was as a form of punishment. Isaac come and said, Hashem, what if I wanna suffer more than just a decree on everyone else? For a reason of good judgment at the day of our passing. Can we do that? Can I separate myself from everybody else and bring on more suffering to myself, more than the collective suffering, if I'd be so much so to be associated with a certain group of people, to have it easier for me when I pass away. Isaac asks HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says yes. And this is what Isaac did. Till now, this is what Zer Shimshon says it, till now, every single person's suffering, their collective suffering even, all that did was, and the purpose of it was to promote atonement, was to promote someone to do teshuvah. Something's hurting, something's wrong, some type of suffering is happening. The reason for that was activate teshuvah, start getting to it, start getting to fixing up. But Isaac now introduced a new concept to humanity, a new concept to what it means to, to be a human being and live in this world, and that is, that when a person suffers in this world, not only will God send it to a person, as we know, but when a person does suffer in this world, it's actually going and cleaning off sin. Even without teshuvah, it doesn't make it perfect, but the very aspect of suffering does clean from judgment, clean from sin. At that moment, and as most importantly, by the final day of judgment of when a person returns his soul to, to his creator, his or her creator. 
And that's what Yitzhak brought down. Before that, no, it was kind of tit for tat. You were part of a collective suffering that was just to promote teshuvah, repentance. There was no such thing as individual suffering. Individual suffering? Aha. Uh -huh. That is what Isaac brought along. And that was a tremendous chesed that Kadosh Baruch Hu actually answered him. When we think of this, we, we tell ourselves, everyone has their package. Everyone has their problems, their hardships, their suffering. Some physically, some emotionally, some financially. And everyone, some all of them, that's okay. Something that keeps us upbeat is to know that God is doing so in order to clean our souls. In order to give us an easier judgment when it comes that day. And that we know that that suffering is not going to waste. Those tears, that sweat, and so be it even if it's that blood, whatever it is. Hopefully not. But all of that does not go to waste. HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes that and He takes all that suffering and pays us back good for that. He wipes off any, any bad. Like we know anything in life. If you work hard for it, you see results. Suffering is hard work and there are positive results which come out from this. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu bless us and the merit of the Zera Shimshon that we wouldn't have too much suffering, but any suffering that HaKadosh Baruch Hu sends our way will be saved for that day at 120 when we have to return our souls to our Creator, that they will be there, all that suffering will come up. So we'll have all our mitzvot, and we'll have all our averot, and then the scale's gonna tip, because we're then we can say, one second, one second, one second. How much did so-and-so suffer in their life? And they're gonna bring a big amount of weight, boom, and tip the scale. So we should know, and that should give us encouragement, that it doesn't go to waste, that it's for our benefit, and we should only be blessed with the minimum amount of suffering. But the suffering that comes to realize it's a chesed from HaKadosh Baruch Hu that came to us through the merit of Yitzhak Avinu. Baruch Adonai Lulam. Amen, amen.